This is an advanced installation. It requires welding and fabrication skills. So if you're not comfortable welding, find a qualified welder or work with someone who is. Hey y'all, I'm David with Willamette Motor and Fabrication. I'm Steven with Offer Design. And this is the fifth and final segment talking about suspension upgrades on your square body Chevy. We've been doing coil over and links up front. And what we're gonna do now is talk about the other parts of the suspension system that may now be playing a little bit of catch up to this great front suspension you've just finished installing. First, just a thing uh, that you talk about scope creep and mission creep, it's really strongly recommended that you do the front suspension kind of by itself so that that way you have the ability to go and enjoy the truck sort of right away and quite frankly, get to know the front suspension so that you can make the best informed choice for the rear. And also it just gets you using your stuff faster. So doing these things in modules is helpful on the pocketbook and also is a great instant moment of gratification, quite frankly. Oh, it's great to break up a project. That's one of, the things that we counsel people on all the time is be careful not to tie on to, into too much to get done. And a lot of times that's part of the project is you're doing a frame off, you're doing all these major systems upgrades, but keep in mind, it's nice to have some intermediate points, get something done and enjoy the truck a little bit. It helps keep it from being a garage queen for years. <laughs> I, I ran that risk of making a, garage, a driveway queen. It's way easier for me to talk about it than it is to do it myself. Yeah. We're just lucky there's not a parking meter sitting in this driveway spot. Right. Because David would be broke by now. <laughs> my, my friend, my friend, it is my wife's car that is right there. Who was not? Who was not in the garage? Not in yeah, the garage. not in the garage. You, you, you. Those are yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We say all of that because what we're going to talk about now are the other suspension systems available for the rear of the truck. And as much as I enjoyed the custom leaves that I had in the front of the truck and they worked very well, links were a great upgrade over that. The rear suspension actually has, it makes great use of all three options for the suspension system. Off the shelf leaf springs, custom leaf springs, what I chose, or even a four link rear. Yeah, so you might be in a position to just go drive the truck with whatever you have. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. We just advocated for that is go get some use out of it. If you're running a shackle flip and a stock rear spring, you're probably gonna run out of rear suspension long before the front's getting happy and you'll, you'll know it. If it's a more of a street cruiser truck, not a super demanding use, maybe that rear suspension that you had before will continue to be fine for you. When you start pushing the truck a little further, you start asking for more. And that's where with a with a kind of off the shelf, your lift kit type spring setups, about the only one that you can consider is using the 64 inch leaves out of the 88 to 98 trucks, because those are typically long enough that you can get some reasonable wheel travel out of them. It's not great, but for something that you can pick up off the shelf, run in, pretty easy approximations of, of factory bracketry. That one's pretty straightforward for a kind of a bottom end starting point. And then from there, you come into our custom leaf systems, which we can do an extended system like David ran, ran runs, has. A uh, 52 inch factory rear, we can pull about 12 inches to 14 inches of vertical travel out of, which is gonna work pretty well with a, a linked up front end with 12 to 14 in the front. The next step is a, a longer leaf, and that just starts to let you push in the wheel travel out. And depending on the application, geez, 16 to 18 is pretty easy to get in vertical travel. Oh, sure, yeah. When I had the, I had a shackle flip 52 inch spring originally, right? A custom off-road leaf and then their shackle flip. And I got a very consistent 12 inches of travel. So when it came time to upgrade the rear, it was again, custom leaf springs because I wanted to maintain a cargo area and everything inside the truck. That was kind of helpful, not pushing shocks through the bed. Right. But uh, I did the long 64 inch rear spring 
put that together with the tension shackle rather than a compression shackle, and you wanna talk about travel. Yeah, what did you pull before you strapped it up? It was in the neighborhood of 17 inches of travel. It is unlimited, unlimited. No straps, no stopping the shackle from going down. It is 19 and a half inches of travel. And I limited that to 15 so that the shocks had a little bit of a margin on either side. And you got all the travel that you want from a good long leaf spring. It's very effective. That's a, a pretty good place to start. There are things that the long leaves do well, maintaining your cargo space. Mm -hmm. It's hard to fit a coil over with good travel under a bed floor. And in something like a Suburban or a Blazer, that really needs to be closed in. In a pickup, you have a little bit more leeway, but you still need to close the shock in if it comes up through the bed floor. There's a little bit to be said for, there's a little bit of simplicity there. People kind of trust a leaf spring and they keep up very well in the rear. Um, maybe you spent a bunch of time and, and mental effort getting the front done and which is very much worth it compared to working on the rear because the rear follows the front steers so those are some things to look for with the long leaves up there but you got to be careful in a higher powered bigger tired more aggressive application you're going to end up with the custom leaves a good shock and potentially traction bars on the back of the truck if you have a system where you can in a pickup where you can run the shocks through the bed floor, all of those things add up to a point where when you do the math, you're not a long ways away from getting into a coilover system in the back. Right. And that's where you start getting much more precise control of the axle through the wheel travel and much more tunability in the spring rates and getting into options for dual shocks. Mm -hmm. You can start looking at running a coilover and a bypass shock. And these are the definitely the higher performance options and for some trail vehicles, it can make sense that you end up with better departure angle behind the truck because there's, there's just nothing behind the axle. Nothing has to be behind the axle. Yeah, it gets to this point that, uh, that there's two things to think about, which is what are you, problem are you trying to solve with your new rear suspension setup? These guys are great at solving problems. And that two is where do you place value? Do you, like me, want to maintain a cargo space and be able to go camping and not have anything come through the bed floor? Uh, or do you have kind of a tolerance for being able to, as you've said, poking shocks through the bed floor is a big sentence. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I dig on fabrication projects uh, quite a bit. But in terms of value, I would say the long leaf custom suspension is about 90% the cost of a good link suspension. So it's mostly about preference and what problems you're solving. Uh, and then, you know, where do you place the value in terms of like how much of your budget you want to apply to the back part of the truck? What I will tell you though, is that by investing in the custom parts of the back part of the truck, they follow the front very nicely. There's still plenty of shock tuning to be done, uh, but really it follows exceptionally well. Oh, just watching some of the clips that we're gonna put in here of following this truck through some rough sections, you can see that rear end working hard. I mean, that there's a lot of suspension action going on there and the front, just it's following the front clearly the front led and it's it's out there and the, the rear is working hard to keep up with a with a really good system so as you start pushing it that will become more important we have the parts to make it keep up i'll be bluntly honest the loosest nut on this truck is the driver i've got a lot more to learn about how this truck drives now but there's a few other things that can be tightened up as we learn about the way the truck behaves. One of those is shock tuning, right? You get a shock that is, because you've weighed your truck and you know kind of how this thing is supposed to work, it's really close. Your springs are all, I'd say you're about 80, 90% of where you want to be. But as you learn more about this, you've got the ability to change parts inside the shock body to more closely match what the truck is capable of doing. Well, in some shocks, we can put an external adjuster on. Mm -hmm. And that can be a great way to get started with tuning your, your ride for what you're doing. And it can be something that you dial up when you're on the street to tighten up the handling and then loosen up when you get off road for small bump compliance. I've been in situations where I've turned adjusters all the way up in heavy terrain like in Baja to actually make it handle whoops better. So the adjusters give you a broader range of, of what you can do with a vehicle without getting inside the shock. And then when you start looking at that option, once you get to a point where you're gonna go in the shock, there's a lot of options for tuning. We give you a very good baseline to start with that we've worked out for a range of, of vehicle uses, but everybody is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's truck is different. And after you drive the truck for a while, you may find that 
oh, if I would like for it to not bounce this way over this particular bump, or I bottom out when I hit this. If we can bring the shocks to us, uh, we work with independent tuners occasionally for helping you valve the shock. Some guys are capable of valving the shock themselves. These things are essentially a hydraulic cylinder. It's not rocket science to work on if you're handy around such things. We can set you up with valving to help you get your shocks tuned in when you get to that somewhat advanced point. And then finally, here on the rear, I actually took the time to install their, their sway bar kit. It's sort of a universal kit. Again, some fabrication required. But you can install this sway bar in the front as well if you want to just bend up the arms to suit. Uh, I can tell you, having not run a sway bar for years, uh, this has made an enormous difference. And it uses some off-the-shelf parts from sway bar manufacturers and some universal arms, but it has just been extremely handy. I can tell you, this truck is not a 50-50 weight distribution, right? That might surprise you. The rear is very heavy. The rear is exceptionally <laughs> heavy. And so I get most of the sway and the rock actually out of the back. And so being able to control for that and then be able to tune the shocks for the front, the truck's got a lot of control on the road and here on the trail. Yeah, the, the sway bar really is a tuning feature. And this is something that started coming out, robbing from other vehicle platforms with the Jeep TJ. And the Currys came out with their anti-rock sway bar as a bar that stays hooked up on the vehicle all the time and tunes the handling. All of that's advanced through the years to the point that really any high performance vehicle is going to be running at least one sway bar, sometimes two, to control the body angle as it corners and things move. And I can tell you, like with this truck, with no sway bar on it, and it's a low center of gravity, relatively light truck, it's a convertible on purpose, there's no weight in, even in the roof, it had an amount of body roll that was not undrivable, but was uncomfortable. And adding a sway bar in the back, tamed that right down, made it a, a pretty good drive on the road and a lot more comfortable all around. So one detail with sway bars with our suspension systems is with some setups, the sway bar is on the truck to keep it from hurting you. Mm -hmm. Like the link geometry, the way everything rides and drives without a sway bar is either uncomfortable or possibly even unsafe. Mm -hmm. These four link systems, the reason why we have this is that linkage layout makes the sway bar a tuning tool for comfort or just body roll control. It's not making the truck drive in a safe manner. The overall axle steer characteristics are such that this thing is still gonna drive nicely even without it. And your rear sway bar is a good an exclamation point to this because you're now making the front end work more mm -hmm. and the truck still drives nice. Mm -hmm. If the linkage geometry was a problem, you would have to have a bar on the front and let the rear work. So that's something that we've really worked hard on is making the truck drive nice without a bar and it's more comfortable and less body roll to have it. It's been, I think, a, a real game changer. The entire rear suspension coupled with the front. I didn't do them separately. I did them at the same time. But when I did finish and putting it all together, this is a whole new truck. I only regret doing them at once. I think I wish I would have had that experience two separate times. But it has just been uh, a world of difference putting all these different parts together that work as a system. And it's not just like buying parts off of a shelf and putting those together, although that's an effective way to start. But looking at the truck from a systems perspective and going module by module to be able to build something that is very capable of going where you want to do where you want to go and be comfortable along the way. Yeah, it's it was fun following you in here this morning just on a, a rough dirt access road. There was no locking hubs. We were just driving a rough dirt access road comfortably yeah. and watching the axles going crazy under the vehicle and this burbs just floating over it. it it's still fun for me to watch. I've been doing this a long time and that's probably why I still am, yeah. is I still love watching that happen. But well, we're all kids grown <laughs> tall out here, so. So this concludes part five of the instruction series for the front coilover link suspension, but also looking at some of the other systems we've done.
Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you being a part of this. Just so you know, we're out here in Moab, Utah, and 100% of what you see on these videos was shot on public land. In fact, that's one of the most fun things about being out here is to be able to go and enjoy the trails and test out all of our stuff that we just got finished putting together. Yeah, in fact, we've got a couple hours of daylight left here. We should go do some wheeling. I think it's a great idea. Let's go.